How does a Model 3 dual motor long range compare to its big brother, the Model S dual motor long range? Well, the best way to get a real comparison on efficiency, range, charging speed, is to have them driven the same journey at the same speeds at the same time on the same day. You drive the cars on different days, different speeds, it's always gonna give different results. Well, in the line of our business, we travel around the country collecting cars to sell, and we sell cars and we deliver cars. Well, we're collecting this one today from North Yorkshire. We've got 300 odd miles to cover back to our showroom on the south coast, and we're gonna stick in convoy to give a real world comparison between these two cars. Does the Model S justify its higher price tag over Model 3? Well. Let's find out. So conditions and wheels make a big difference to these cars. This is a 2020 Model S long range Raven. This is as good as the Model S gets until the next one comes out next year. We're on 19 inch wheels, Michelin tires. This Tesla Model 3 long range has the 18 inch wheels with the aero covers on and Michelin tires as well. It's 19 degrees Celsius today, which is about 66 Fahrenheit. And it's just a slight breeze coming from, I think an easterly direction here, but very reasonable conditions. So we're gonna get stuck into the video, get in the car, start the journey. And uh, before we do that, don't forget to like this channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and also follow us on social media. If you have any comments, let us know. We'll take them all on board. So as we start this journey now, I'm in the Tesla Model S and my colleague Gintz is in the Model 3. And as we come along these country roads and some lovely scenery that we have here, on a road like this, the Model 3 trumps it. It is smaller, which in the UK is just literally more convenient. It fits down roads easier. Um, but it's just more agile. I and mean, the Model 3 is very agile, very directional. The Model S feels like quite a big, wide lump in comparison. And uh, whilst this is a Raven with adapted suspension, it does quite a good job of absorbing the bumps. The Model 3 is a bit more lumpy, but on the other hand, it kind of has this kind of float feeling that can confuse the suspension a little bit when you get lots of undulations and ridges, whereas the Model 3, you feel more on the country roads. It's more directional goes like a stab rat so on country roads like this the model 3 would be my preference but actually as we get out onto the motorway and we stretch the legs of these cars it's where the model s i think comes into its own a bit more of a comfortable cruiser uh, a bit more refined a bit quieter inside so uh, we've got a mixture of both on this journey in the meantime enjoy some of this lovely yorkshire countryside look at this place this is somewhere called castle howard so sat nav's taking us on a very scenic route. Some amazing countryside, some lovely old stone buildings. I've never been here before. It's one of the best things about the job, really, to get to go to all sorts of places. Castle Howard, literally driving through a piece of what looks like a very old building. Look at that. Very nice. What a spectacular area. If you're in Yorkshire, I'll drive around this area. Just covered about 25 miles, but we stopped just to top off the charge on each car because they were at different levels when we left. Plus the Model 3 hadn't been driven, so that would have been colder, had less regen, would have been unfair advantage to the Model S, which we've already covered 300 miles in today. So just stopped off at these Instavolt charger here. We're gonna put both the cars back to 90%. So they're both now warmed up, 90%. And by the way, for using public chargers like this Intervolt, on a Model S, we have to have this CCS adapter, this little section in here. I think increasingly in the UK, it's really handy to have one of these. The Model S doesn't come with it as standard until really recently, but you can get it on the much older cars. It means you can use more of the Tesla charging network, including the V3 chargers now, plus the third party chargers like Intervolt, which by the way, are excellent, really simple, quick contactless card payment, and it charges. So well done Instavolt for your excellent charges. Okay, we just pulled away from a York in Yorkshire. So we both the cars are at 90% state of charge now, which is the daily charge limit for a tester anyway. You can go to 100%, but not very frequently, but that's enough to see us on our way and give a good comparison real world of what we can get. Um, we're using air conditioning. We're not hypermiling. We're going to be driving out the speed limit. So we're not trying to get the very best range we can out of these cars today. It's about real world tests again. Um, so standard driving, climate control on, radio on. Uh, the Model S does have range mode, which on a long trip like this, we tend to turn on anyway, just reduces the power used by the air conditioning system. So um, as we use range mode, the Model 3 doesn't have that. So, you know, will that give an advantage or not? We'll see. 
and then we'll start gathering up the efficiency comparisons of the two. But anyway, it's just kind of 2.30 in the afternoon. We've got quite a lot of ground to cover and we want to go home for dinner. So let's hit the road and see how we go. All right, I'm going to call Gintz and play a little game of top trumps just to pass a bit of time whilst we're on the motorway here. Richard's calling. Hello, Richard. Okay, Gintz, whilst we're sat on the motorway, not doing much, let's have a quick game of top trumps. So, my Tesla Model S, it's uh, all aluminium. What about the Model 3? Yeah, it's all steel. It is all steel, but what's your weight? Minus eight, 1850, I think you're a bit heavier than me. Yeah, 2100 kilograms. You do have some aluminium panels in yours, but it is mainly steel. But yeah. this is still quite a lot heavier. So what have I got? The 250 kilogram over you, which is quite a lot. Um, and if with me in it, then a little bit more of a difference again. Didn't you probably weigh the same as a blade of grass, to be honest? With you in it, probably like two and a half, something like that. Oh, good one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah if, it, if I'd had lunch today, then it would be. 0 to 60, 3.7. 4.2, but I can unlock a power upgrade, so it's going to shave it down to 3.7, which is going to make the same as your car. Yeah, that's true. Okay, um, well, we should have covered. I mean, I've got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in this car. Plenty for long distances. I get 79, but usable is 75. Okay, then, Gintz, what about horsepower? I've got, well, Tesla don't publish figures, but about 530, 40 horsepower out of this uh, Raven model. What have you got? I got 436. So, yeah. Almost 100 less. Okay, what about this one then? So now the Model S is in its league. We're on a motorway. I've got autopilot on. And I've got air suspension. And this Raven model also has adaptive damping, which I've got set to comfort, just to really iron all the bumps out. What about you? you no, know, I got, I got old-fashioned springs. Nothing fancy. And the ride in the Model 3 is just not as comfortable as a Model S, is it, to be honest? I can agree with you in that one. Yeah, it's a bit bumpy. It's quite a firm, most modern cars are, but I think for the long journeys the Model S does trump the Model 3, to be honest. Yeah, I mean the biggest difference between the two is this price gap, isn't it? So this car was uh, about £80,000 new, 82 at the time this one was bought, and I think it was 79 for a bit, but let's say about £80,000, which for the size of the battery and the tech it's got, I think isn't too bad. But your Model 3, a lot cheaper, isn't it? Oh, it's way cheaper. It comes in at 50,000 brand new. 50,000 new. So we've got, yeah, quite a big price gap there, haven't we? Um, sort of 30,000 pounds. That's a lot of money. Um, even used, you know, you can get a Model S100D for about 50,000 pounds now, which is, okay, a bit older than this one, but same kind of, same battery and very similar kind of capabilities. Not quite as efficient, but... The Model 3 long range then comes down to sort of 40,000 pounds now. So there's still a price gap and that's a newer car. I'll tell you where I think you're gonna pull a trump card on me here is gonna be charging speed. So this car can in theory charge at 200 kilowatts, but in the UK to make use of V3 superchargers or the other really fast chargers, I have to use a CCS adapter. And when you use an adapter, they've limited the power that can go through that. So real world, I only see about 140 kilowatt charging speed out of this. Whereas the Model 3 can do, what do you see out of your? Allegedly, it's supposed to charge at 250 kilowatts, but that never happens. So yeah, it's, we've seen a couple times 180, 190, but again, it's, it's very rare. Normally it's around 140, 150, 60. Sits around there. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, this is going to be an interesting, interesting test. Obviously, we're staying in convoy, same speeds. So we'll, we'll check in after we've covered quite a few miles a couple of times and see how the efficiency is compared. But what we'll try and do is get to a, a V3 charger nearer to uh, our destination. So we'll cover 200, 250 miles, if you can get that far. <laughs> we'll cover a couple hundred miles, plug into some fast charge and see if the charging speed of that is in the real world vastly different to this car and maybe we can get that car recharged to do another 200 miles quicker than this car we'll see do you prefer the seats in the model s or model 3 yeah uh, i i think yeah i think i prefer the model s because they're, they're a bit more nicer i don't know why obviously the vegan leather is the same but the way the way you sit it sort of has more support yeah, I think just, just about Model S. I agree. 
skins, do you prefer the sound system in a Model 3 or Model S? These have both got the premium audio. Yeah, that's a good question. So actually, this is the premium audio as well, so I'm listening in now, and it sounds great. They both sound very, very good, and Tesla's are known for very good bass, very, very punchy bass. But in Model S, I think because there's a bit more, probably a bit more space inside, so it sort of creates a bigger stage, and it sounds probably just a tiny bit richer. I think, yeah, that, I think that, that's how it is. That's a good technical answer. He knows his sound. Um, so he said, yeah, in the Model S, slightly prefers the sound, which I agree with as well. They're both very, very good. But again, just slightly better, which is good. You do get, you know, feel like you get a bit more for your money, I guess, with the Model S. We've just covered 120 miles now into the journey, and I've checked in on Gintz a few moments ago on the phone. He was averaging 248 watt hours per mile since we left and I was averaging 251 so actually really quite close I thought there'd be more in it but we've still got a long way to go yet so we'll see if that changes much at all 250 watt hours per mile would be four miles per kilowatt hour of course um, which most other cars use just the testers do watt hours per mile real mixture of conditions today as you probably hear it's absolutely pouring with rain at the moment Next minute it's warm and sunny, then it's raining again. Welcome to England. I had to stop again. Not to charge, <laughs> just need the toilet. The trouble with these range tests these days is that the cars just go so far. It takes a long day and we have to make stops for the toilet long before the car ever does. covered well over 200 miles i'll give you some stats in a moment but we're just pulling up to the superchargers now to do a little top up okay we've covered 224.7 miles and we've got some figures for you so a bit of gig time now so uh, we're now at heathrow hilton t5 uh superchargers massive bank of chargers here just west of london and um actually we've got 95 miles to travel back to base the Tesla Model S can actually do it. I don't actually need to stop. But anyway, let me give you some of these numbers. So 224.7 miles have been covered. The Model S went from 90% down to 29% remaining, giving an indicated range of 107 miles still possible to go. That was an average of 242 watt hours per mile. So just over four miles per kilowatt hour, 54.4 uh, kilowatt hours used. Um, so with the total that was used, 61% uh, taken from the battery on that 225 mile journey, it would give a theoretical range of 368 miles of real world driving range today. We've had sun, we've had rain, there was a little bit of road works which slowed us down, so um, that actually made it a bit more efficient and an accident on the M25, good old M25. But how did the Model 3 compare? So. We'd also left at 90%, same distance, same speed, same journey. That arrived here with 9% of battery remaining with an indicated range of 27 miles. So that car definitely needed to stop to get back. Model S could have carried on, to be honest. Its average was 239 watt hours per mile. So a little bit more efficient than the Model S, but really not by much, by three watt hours per mile. It used 54 kilowatt hours and 81% of its battery. So if we pro rata that out, that would give this Model 3 long range, a real world driving range today of 277 miles if you went from 100% to zero. Remember the Model S was 368 miles. So there is a difference. And I guess this is where, like I say, in the Model S you can in theory go home, but in the real world, you need to stop and charge anyway. So we stopped here. We're both on V3 superchargers right now. And we're going to recharge for a little bit. The Model 3 needs it. We've plugged in the Model S at exactly the same time. So let's compare charging speeds and let's charge them up to a level where let's say they've got 200 miles of indicated range to go, something like that, because then that would indicate the same as if we were doing a very long journey across Europe, for example, you need another 200 miles of range, another three hours roughly of driving. Which car can get there first? Let's find out.
Okay, so we've been here for 22 and a half minutes now. That's taken the Model 3 up to 200 miles of range. At the same time, the Model S is up to 254 miles of range. So the Model S won that. That was at 200 miles of indicated range by 15 minutes. And I actually accidentally stopped the charging by having the app open, take my coat off. Anyway, so the, neither car reached their peak charging rate. This car reached 134 kilowatts that I saw. The Tesla Model S only just over 100. Now they're both on these V3 chargers, so they should have had equal share of power, but here's a fairly big charging stalls. I think it's 24 bays here, and neither reached their peak potential. Interestingly, as the batteries reached sort of 70% on this one, which was its 200 miles, versus about 67%, actually it's just less than that on this car, this car is still carrying on charging faster at 88 kilowatts. This one's now down to below 80 kilowatts, but of course it has to add less because it is a little bit more efficient. Anyway, to get a range back to 200 miles indicated in each car, 15 minutes, 22 minutes. It's not long really, is it? That's another three hours of driving. So very, very easy to do those cross continental trips. And as ever, when we film these days, it's always a long day and we have to really stretch our bladders and usually stop before the cars do. So I think we're going to wrap it up for now. We both want to get off back and uh, spend some time at home. So we'll call it a wrap for now, but don't forget to follow our Instagram and Facebook pages. We will put a link in the description below. Please leave any comments you have, but I think you can see both cars are equally capable of vast distances, especially the Model S long range with over 350 miles of range per charge.